Well, welcome to episode 276, Key Principles for Building a Top One Physique with Michael Sheedy. Welcome to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, mindset specialist and performance coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you for your time, your ears, your energy, and for being in this community. I think you're going to love today's episode with Michael Sheedy as we dive deep in busting the myths around fat loss, how we can build muscle sustainably and get to a 1% physique or at the bare minimum, have a better quality of life and what you can implement into your fitness routine. So stick till the end because every minute of this is jam-packed with useful tactical information. Two things before we jump in. One, if you haven't done so already, please head over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. Help me get this more this message out to more people. If you have anyone in mind that you think would resonate with this podcast or this episode or any other episode in the past, please send that over. And then second is uh, Michael and I are super passionate. And so for whatever reason, the first couple minutes seem a bit faster than normal. It's not edited that way. It's just kind of how the video is. It's just I think it's just naturally just because uh, Michael and I are super passionate. So some of you may not even notice. I just figured I'd let you know in advance in the event that you're like, did I speed this up? But it does slow down after a few minutes. So enjoy the episode and let me know your thoughts. Today in the studio live in Las Vegas, I have Michael Sheedy, who I've been following for a while now and just more so recently been really engaged with a lot of his work being that we have mutual connections his his passion and his mastery dedication to the craft is something that I appreciate and so for those of you who don't know who Michael is uh, get ready because he's going to come at you with some heat uh, he's an online fitness coach personal trainer and entrepreneur he's competed in 12 bodybuilding competitions which I'm going to ask him about he's had one amateur boxing match which I think is uh, really really cool I love boxing we'd love to get into that a little bit and then also has been featured in Train Magazine aside from that he's a heart centered leader and some of the people that I I work with in my business also use him as a personal trainer and mentor and so there's a lot of affinity here with just how we see the world what we're about and what we want to see more of in the world so thank you for being on the show awesome Bob. what an introduction yeah appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that brother yeah, thank you. yeah of course yeah. so on the show uh for people to get to know you quick and in a hurry we have a series of rapid fire questions so awesome. Uh, whatever's coming through. First okay. question is, where were you born and raised? Born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've been living here my whole life. It's um, it's such a great city to live in. I mean, um, I'm not sure how long you've lived here yourself Same. personally. Born and raised. But, dude, amazing. And yeah. it's uh, to see the growth of the city, um, you know, and also just the energy that is here, mm -hmm. um, I believe has also helped me tremendously as an entrepreneur because I'm able to see, you know, people doing so well, you know, in their own personal endeavors because we're so close to, you know, celebrities and like all these people coming throughout the city. So I feel like that's always something that's really pushed me to be better as an entrepreneur. So I love where the city's headed and been living here my whole life. So love that. What's a philosophy that you live by? A philosophy that I live, live by. Interesting. Um, that's, that's a great question. Um, I guess one would be, um, attract, don't chase. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's, you know, that's very simple. I actually have it on a tattoo here on my arm. So I, that. I, I guess that's the easiest one to go by. But, um, you know, what I mean by that is not necessarily manifestation, but more so, um, attracting, um, the circumstances you want through your actions, yes. right? A lot of people, they, uh, talk about their goals or they think about their goals, but they're not putting the actions together with intent to be able to accomplish what they want. And yes. Beautiful. I love that's that. That's what that means to me. What is a recent book that you've read that offered immense value for you? Um, Discipline is destiny. 
Mm. by Ryan Holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great Great book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It tells stories and then it gives you kind of like a quick, you know, quick little lesson at the, at the end of each chapter, which I love. And it's just reaffirming the things that are important. And I think it's always great to like, you know, I, I think of course we have behaviors instilled in us over working over time and, but it's always great to get refreshers on, on the things that we need to continue to focus on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Have you read any other, other of his books? Ryan Holiday's no, that was actually the okay. first Ryan Holiday book I've read. I've read a tremendous amount of um, nonfiction self development. Okay. Uh, yeah. S- Stillness is the key. That's is another, another good one of title. Book, is that is that? Do you that's like Ryan that Holiday. Yeah. It was like it talks all about presence. Okay. And like being still and being intentional, which I love you that. Know, and nowadays, like that's everything. Yeah. So I think I think you'd like that. Awesome. Uh, what is a piece of advice that you've gotten that has served you well? A piece of advice that I've gotten that has served me well. Hmm. Success loves speed. Hmm. Yeah. And and this is a great piece of advice because um, a lot of people are constantly over analyzing and under executing. And that's what I've seen. And for me personally, I felt like, um, you know, I've been on a, this personal path of mine in my own, you know, business and in personal life of to be the best I can be. And, and what I've realized is, um, a lot of the times we overcomplicate things and it's just important to execute on things instead. Timing is really important. Yeah. I like that. Success loves speed. Mm -hmm. What does the world need more of right now? What does the world need more of right now? Mm, I would say, um, compassion. Yeah. 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 Compassion ultimately, which leads to empathy. Um, yeah, I was listening to, you know, I, I listened to like podcasts and, um, I was listening to a podcast with Alex Hormozzi in it. And he was talking about when, whenever he gets angry, right. And I don't, I don't necessarily get angry. I really do my best to work the muscle of, Mm -hmm. of, I guess, patience or, or just letting my emotions subside before I make any erratic decisions. However, you know, he talked about when you're upset with another person or when you're angry with another person, the easiest way to overcome that emotion, because ultimately anger is a poison Mm -hmm. for yourself, not the other, not the other person you're mad at is to have compassion and empathy for the position that they're in. And even if you don't like who they are, what they've done, it'll allow you to um, move forward in a positive way. And yeah. I think that's a, uh, something that everyone can can take as a lesson and, and use in their daily life. That's cool. So um, I'm in the process of writing a book on communication and, okay. and they're like, you know, five C's. One of the C's is compassion that yeah. I think we need more of in our world. So I would agree with you there. Yeah, it helps. And in researching compassion, I actually learned the difference between compassion and empathy. Mm-hmm. Empathy is is your ability to understand or kind of connect with what someone is going through. Mm-hmm. Whereas compassion is not just the understanding, but the motivation to want to do something about it. Right which I think is so key okay? because yeah. we can like sit here and listen to people's stories and right. like feel for them. Right. But then at the end of the day, what are we doing to support or challenge or, right. you know, get them to move along? Right. 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 Where the compassion yeah. piece right. really brings in the action right. with the emotion, I like it. which yeah. is cool. Which so, is like forgiveness, which yeah. would be a part of that action. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 So awesome. So how did you, let's, let's go into the, to the meat now. What, Love it. how did you get into fitness? What was like the catalyst for you? Yeah. I, I, so I started working out when I was like 17 years old, just to gain, um, weight for playing football. I okay. was, I was super skinny. I was 160 pounds at, you know, six feet tall. So I was thin and I was just getting blown up on the football field. And I was like, you know what, I, I got to do something about this. So I just started eating as much as I could mm. to try to gain weight. And, um, you know, probably wasn't doing it in, in the best way. I was eating like <laughs> DiGiorno's pizzas every day. Um, but I gained, I ended up putting on 25 pounds in like a year, like naturally, um, probably puberty played a part in that. But, um, but yeah, that's where I kind of fell in love with like, then the results came and then people started noticing and you get through, you know, um, affirmations and, and, um, you know, girls started noticing Mm -hmm. in high school and that, that, you know, reaffirmed like, wow, okay, this is something I I should keep doing. And then, um, from there I just fell in love with the discipline side of it and kind of what it was doing for me in my life as far as like personal habits go. Yeah. Yeah. When people talk about mind body connection, what does that mean to you? Mind body connection, as far as in exercise, in, yeah. in, in, in exercise, yeah. like during a workout, during, right. yeah. So I mean, I mean, one of the things like you talked about is like being present, right? Mm-hmm. Like I feel personally, for me, um, the best way that I can be present is to um, connect with my muscles when I'm working out. So not only do I use the time in the gym as like. Uh, meditation space, a form mm-hmm. of meditation, because I'm very present. I'm, I try not to use my phone. You know, I'm, I'm switching songs, but typically I just try to stay focused on the workout. 
when you're doing that too, effectively, when you're trying to connect with your muscle, you're going to engage the muscle more. You're going to cr- contract more muscle tissue. You're going to be able to break down the muscle tissue or push more strength out of each exercise. So, um, you know, I think that's, of course, if you're, if you're working out in any capacity, um, you know, you should be doing your best to be present in the moment through mind to muscle connection, which is going to facilitate more results, whether it's trying to gain muscle, whether it's, you know, losing body fat, whether it's gaining strength, all mm-hmm. those things are important. Is there a series of music that you like to listen to more than the other when when exercising? Um, in regards to like the genre, of yeah, music, yeah, hip hop, like, yeah, like classical. You know, I like. <laughs> I, you know, I I really enjoy upbeat like uh, motivational music. Um, so I'll do like EDM, I'll do hip hop, yeah. um, whatever's like upbeat. I can't do like R and B or like mm-hmm. slow music. Like it has to it has to like pump me up, and I get energy yeah. from yeah. the music I listen to. Typically, okay. yeah, yeah, same. Sam, I've recently been listening to Viking music. I don't know okay. Tried that. No, it's like epic, like epic <laughs> yeah. music. I, yeah. my, my it's friends, like 300 ish. Yeah, you know, some of that's, if it had some like EDM on it, I'd like it. My <laughs> friend sent me a track like that. I was like, uh, it's just, it, it's, it's epic, but it's yeah. not, there's not enough you. like high hits in I it. I feel yeah. you. Okay. So you've been in the fitness game for a long time now, yes, sir. nearly a decade, yes, sir. Or if not longer, 10 years. So, yeah. 10 years yeah. Mm-hmm. What do most people get wrong right off the bat with fitness in general? Like if you look at the normal gen pop, right? okay, yeah, what are they? What are they not seeing? What are they getting wrong? Where, where are the misconceptions? What are they getting wrong? I would say a lot of people um, that are trying to change their body composition, mm-hmm. not get ready for a marathon, not get ready for an endurance event. People who are trying to change their body composition run way too much. Mm. And um, that's something that is detrimental actually to your progress because it reduces your metabolic rate, both short-term and long-term. So running is great if you're trying to lose weight quickly. And this is something actually Mm. um, uh, my client Maverick, um, he was running all the time because he would try to get ready for, um, you know, a vacation. So he would just go on this like five or six week crash diet, eat low calories and run. What would happen is he would end up losing weight, but he'd look almost softer in a Mm. way because what it does is when you run, it pairs down muscle tissue because it's primarily using, um, the glycolytic system. So it's, it's, um, basically burning, uh, the stored glycogen from your muscles, sending an adaptation signal to reduce muscle size. Um, so yeah, you're burning calories, but you're reducing your metabolism because for every pound of muscle, you're burning an extra 60 calories a day. Mm. So you end up actually losing fat slower, the more running you do. So what I always recommend to, and I just had a video um, on Instagram that went viral with this with this mm-hmm. exact piece of advice I'm giving is to do low intensity steady state cardio on a daily basis if your goal is fat loss. I would say 90% of the people in the gym are trying to lose body fat. Yeah. Not many people are trying to gain strength. I understand you know, powerlifting and things like that, but sure. most people are trying to lose body fat. So if that's what you're trying to do, low intensity steady state cardio, um, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of fast paced walking or Stairmaster every day is something that you can not only sustain, um, but is also going to help you burn fat more efficiently and not burn through muscle so you can keep your uh, metabolism high. With like other high intensity um, activities like boxing, mm-hmm. does it have a similar effect it has to running? The exact same effect. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because you and I were talking about yeah. boxing. Because um, I love a, boxing a, a little bit. Yeah, and um, if done too frequently, bo- like most of the time, you will not. You look, look at the people that are in the specific field of at the highest level, right? Yeah. Most boxers are not extremely muscular unless they're a genetic freak, yeah, right? Like, like a Floyd, let's say like, a Floyd Mayweather. Or, or Wilder, right? Yeah. Um, he is, you know, somebody who you look at and he's very muscular, but most people aren't, most people that are at the highest level in boxing are not very muscular because the activity takes um, your heart rate over, let's say 160 beats per minute Absolutely. for an extended period of time. And the goal is to fire your arms as fast as possible. So your body adapts to that by shrinking down muscle tissue, Mm -hmm. not only in the arms, and you'll see a lot of boxers have skinny arms, Yeah. right? Um, But it also reduces, uh, again, it it uses more of the glycogen stored in the muscles. So you're going to shrink while you do it. Hmm. So it's it's something that I I enjoy boxing so much, yeah. but I only do it very periodically. What is periodic? Like once a week? Once to twice a week. Like if I'm if I'm like you know really in it and I'm enjoying it, I'll do it twice a week. Okay. Um, For how know, long? Um, I'll do sessions of you know thirty. 30 to 40 okay. minutes max, yeah. right? Like I'll do mitts and um, yeah. mostly do mitt and bag work. It's about 10 maybe. to 12 rounds. Yeah, ish. yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're wanting to do something like that, um, that's what I would recommend. Any, okay. any, if you want to do it more than twice a week, I would only do 20 minutes at a time. And I know it sounds 
funny, but that's that's how you're going to continue to see progress. Yeah. If the goal yeah. is not to be a boxer. Now, if the goal <laughs> is to be a boxer, <laughs> totally you got to box story. all the time. Yeah. And this is what I tell my clients. You have to eat and train for how you want to look and perform. Yeah. Got it. Right. Good to know because I love boxing, not just for like the actual art of it, yeah. but for mentally. Oh, like, it's amazing. It keeps it's me so, so dialed in. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, the, the sharper I am on the mitts yeah. or on the bag. Yeah. yeah. Correlate to everything else. In my How often life. are you boxing? Three times to four, yeah. maybe a week. It's not bad. Yeah. Like you're, you, how long are you boxing for? Twenty to thirty minutes. So that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. As yeah. long as you're able to recover from it, and still, yeah. if you're if you're doing resistance training, yeah. um, as I long am. as you're able to recover from the boxing, most people try to do boxing or some sort of activity that's explosive like that with resistance training, which is why they get injured because mm-hmm. you're doing an exercise that's requiring explosive lengthening of the tissue, which is boxing, right? And then you're doing another exercise that is contraction and shortening of the tissue. So you have t- you have an antagonist, mm. right? Th- those are antagonist um, forms of, of, of exercise. Yeah. So that's what ends up injuring people because they're so short and so tight. And then they're asking their body to go do something that that's lengthening. So yeah. you got to keep your mobility. You got to stay really, really tight on your mobility work. Yeah. Um, and you got to understand the volume of each one. When conducting a program for someone, how long do you have someone typically do a set, that set program until you shift things or change them? Four to six weeks. Four to six yeah, weeks. Yeah. Like okay. programming wise in regards to your body's adaptation, our bodies are incredible at, at adapting. I imagine. Yeah. They will adapt in any direction. If you sit on the couch all day, your body's going to adapt to that. If you run all day, your body's going to adapt to that, right? We are incredible vehicles that have survival mechanisms in place. That being said, four to six weeks uh, is the amount of time that the central nervous system and the, you know, muscles, muscle skeletal mm-hmm. system takes to adapt to an exercise programming before you should switch. Got it. Not every week, but yeah. every four to six weeks. Right. Yep. Okay. So for those of people who like that constant stimulation of new, 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 yeah. probably aren't making the, not as, not as, not as many gains as they could yeah. be. Right. And the goals, yeah. I mean, the goal is efficiency. Now, listen, end of the day, we're, we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of, uh, you know, splitting hairs here, right? Yeah. If you, if you want to go in the gym, working out and doing something different every time is better than never working out. But if you want the maximum, you know, uh, results, it's better to program yourself for every four to six weeks. And that's what I do for my clients. Yeah. Yep. When researching just through your experience, your certifications, what was so what was shocking to you about lifting in general and what it does for your body, your mind, you name it? Was there anything that you're like, wow, like no wonder why I want I like it, but maybe I should keep doing this. Yeah, I guess um I guess the the benefits outside of of course aesthetically speaking right sure, like that's right. very very visible to see but what are the other things that we don't know that it does exactly. without without actually understanding the literature yes. of exercise science one would be bone density and mm-hmm. how it increases bone density so quick example my mom hadn't worked out for like 30 years she was 55 years old she came to me she wanted to get in good shape and I put her on an exercise program before she got with me on her program she had had osteoporosis so mm-hmm. much so that one time when I hugged her, I cracked one of her ribs. Whoa! Like, and I just gave her a hug, and her rib cracked. And this is like a true, true story. Um, and she was fine, right? But sure. she had some pain, and like she had a, I think she, she had to definitely go see a doctor for that. But after, I would say about a year or two into working out, her osteoporosis went away. Her, mm. her, she was no longer getting injured because she was getting little micro injuries in the right. bones because of how long she went without exercise activity. So what's wild is from exercise activity alone, you increase longevity just from bone density because one of the things that you that can slow you down as you get older yes. is injury, Absolutely. right? And that's uh, brittle bones, right? That can be from lifestyle, from not exercising and being sedentary. That could be from alcohol consumption. That's another thing and smoking as well, right? Mm. So those are the things that I was like really amazed about. And then also cognitive ben- uh, benefits as well, like uh, neuroplasticity as far as um, strengthening the neurological pathways in your brain from exercise has been proven that it actually increases your memory retention. Mm. Um, just from exercise alone, right? Yeah. Any form of exercise, whether it's, you know, resistance training or endurance activity. So there's a lot of benefits outside of just what you see aesthetically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Okay. With, in regards to nutrition, I know you've mentioned that we need carbs and people have a very interesting yeah. relationship that's with awesome. carbs. You watched one of my, one of my videos <laughs> yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. So what, what would you say to the audience here about carbs? Because I imagine most people are like, I should cut as many as possible to shred, to to cut fat as quickly as possible. And when you hear something like that, 
what do you think? What, what do you, what's your suggestion there? So it's interesting because there's, there's two sides to this, right? Because it, it's deep and I'll kind of go into it a little bit. I think that if your goal is to have long-term metabolic health, which means you can keep fat off, fat off of your body forever, yes. then carbs are important if you are doing resistance training and you're not overweight. Yeah. Okay. There's certain people that have what's called insulin resistance. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have insulin resistance when you've chronically consumed carbohydrates without exercise for an extended period of time, which leads to type two diabetes, which is a large part of the population because of our diet. Yeah. Over 70% yeah. of the population is overweight. So that being said, a lot of those people in that population would actually benefit from reducing carbs in the short term mm -hmm. while losing weight, increasing their body's ability to utilize carbohydrates, and then reintroduce it as they get into a healthier body weight range Yes, because it is important for cognitive function and exercise performance as well. Now, yeah. people like you and I, mm -hmm. let's say that are in a healthy body weight range and also have lower body fat percentages you definitely don't suffer from type two diabetes. Neither do I. Mm -hmm. um, is it is important to have carbohydrates in your diet because it does influence your body's ability to gain muscle. Yes, and ultimately, the more muscle you have on your body, yeah. predictably so, the not only the longer you'll live, but also the more body fat you'll be able to keep off and burn long term. So what type of carbs are we talking about? Like in your mind, when you say carbs, what yeah. are you thinking about? And then so, how does that build the muscle? Yeah. So I always look at, you know, whole food ingredients, right? Like nutrient dense foods, um, complex carbohydrates, uh, some simple sugars as well. Um, I think that fruit is great, especially mm -hmm. in the morning or around a workout, um, fruit that's high in fiber, um, berries, uh, kiwis, grapefruit, oranges, apples, things like that. Um, bananas, even around a workout as well. And then I also, for complex carbohydrates, which are slow lower burning carbohydrates, mm -hmm. um, but that your body can readily use as well. Mm -hmm. I like white rice. It's very easily digested more, more than brown rice because um, okay. brown rice actually binds with other nutrients and makes it the nutrients less digestible mm. because of the husk. Um, so I don't like brown rice much. Uh, I don't prescribe that to my clients. Um, I like sweet potatoes for the nutrient density of them, high in potassium as well. Um, and then red potatoes are also a great comp uh, complex carbohydrate source. Um, and then, yeah, I, oatmeal is hit or miss. Um, um, some people don't digest it well. Mm -hmm. So that's not something that I, I don't consume oatmeal at all. Uh, typical bodybuilders would, you know, you know, maybe um, disagree, but I found many people don't digest it well. Um, so those are my feet. Three favorites are white rice, red potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Okay. Yep. If you were to choose your perfect meal to have, and maybe you do this every day, mm -hmm. what would that consist of? Perfect meal would be a lean protein source, um, white rice and, um, a healthy fat and a uh, vegetable. So for like, like my lean protein, I would do, I really like shrimp. Um, mm -hmm. I've been enjoying the taste of shrimp. It's very lean. Um, you have some other uh, vitamins and minerals in it that you can get from fish. What about the cholesterol um, like in, I, I, in shrimp? Zero, no. zero yeah, zero okay. cholesterol. Yeah. And in cholesterol, dietary cholesterol is much different than, okay. um, actual cholesterol in the body because dietary cholesterol, uh, from like, let's say eggs actually actually mm -hmm. helps you to produce testosterone. Mm -hmm. So dietary cholesterol is actually important. It is important that we get some of that in. However, I do like a lean protein just because it's easily digested. Um, ground turkey, 99 mm -hmm. one ground turkey or shrimp. Um, chicken, I can't eat anymore because I'm burnt out on that, but I'll do, <laughs> I, I, I literally cannot <laughs> eat chicken right now. I'm not there yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, so when you get there, you'll know what I'm talking about. I like white rice personally for myself because it's easily digested. I'll do, so I'll do like, seven ounces of a lean protein. I'll do a cup of white rice, right? Which mm -hmm. is 50 grams of carbohydrates. Um, I'll do, uh, for my healthy fat, I actually like to do either, um, or my fat source, I should say. Um, I either like to do grass fed butter. I'll mm -hmm. do a tablespoon of that, which is 15 grams of fat, or I'll do half of an avocado, which is also 15 grams of fat. So I'll do one of those. Um, and then I, I really like to do raw carrots. Raw carrots are mm -hmm. really high. Um, and carotene, great for your skin, great for your eyes, high in, uh, vitamin C and fiber as well. Boom. So Love that, dude. This is great. What would you say is one of your favorite um, energy producing habits outside of fitness that helps you show up both to the gym and to the work that you do? Um, sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number one, right? Yeah, that's dude, that's one. the number one yeah. hack right there. A lot of people yeah. try to circumvent sleep. And I think I have as well. Like as an entrepreneur, I'm like, okay, I'm growing my business. If I can cut my sleep down by two hours a day, 
what ends up happening is your productivity decreases, mm-hmm. right? Your motivation Especially goes over down. Time, yeah. yeah, your your mood level switch, right? Your motivation for the gym goes down. So it's like really audit your sleep habits. And I think it's important to, um, one thing that I've noticed, my energy does increase when I am going to sleep closer to when the sun is setting, like um, right afterwards, right? Like yeah. 9, 30, Eight, 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or if you can, yeah, I can't yeah. sleep that early. Right. 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And then you're waking up, you know, earlier in the morning as the sun is rising, right? 5, 30, something like that. Mm-hmm. That's always what I found to be advantageous for me in regards to my energy cycles. Yeah. Um, also as well, another big one for circadian rhythm, which is energy cycles, um, is getting out in the sun. Yes. Uh, I think that's really important. Uh, I actually probably am a little bit sunburned right now. I was out in the sun <laughs> yesterday, running, running some hill sprints. Um, and that's what I found to really be helpful with uh, getting deeper rest because you're able to uh, produce more um, melatonin in your sleep from mm-hmm. from getting out in the sun during the day. Have you heard the podcast with uh, Dr. Jack Cruz, um, Andrew Huberman, and Rick Rubin? Mm-mm. So Dr. Jack Cruz is like 30 years uh, scientist who talks all about sunlight. Okay. And like goes super deep, like knows more about sun than Andrew Huberman. Okay. And it, is, it, send, is it a newer podcast? It's send, within send the it last me. six months. Yeah, send you'll it to love me. it. Yeah, but it fits perfectly what you're saying. Like all of the hormones that get shifted with the sun, yeah. the massive metabolism, your mitochondria, like massive. everything. Yeah. We need sun. Yeah, and grounding on the earth, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, right? that's something I've actually I've actually started doing more of recently as well, and I I have found some benefits to it. Like I I do feel more. I would say I feel more relaxed yes. when I'm doing something like that, yes. right? Because you're completely away from, you know, typically you shouldn't be on your phone if you're grounding, right? Putting your feet in the earth. But um, that's something I've found to be helpful as well. Anyways. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the junk light too, everywhere we go, it's like, right. it's bad. Even so. what we have in here today, right. which is fine. We're doing it for the, we're doing <laughs> exactly. it for the podcast. Right. 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 You, can't do, you can't do warm lights for the podcast. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I, see, I saw something about that recently as well as like LED, LED light bulbs versus warm lights and how much that actually impacts um, like restful sleep and energy, energy cycles. It's wild, so man. the more often... Like this bright white light in here, it is keeping us awake and because mm-hmm. that's how our bodies recognize it. But because it's so artificial, it does have an effect on our circadian rhythms. Right. Anyways, that's it. Yeah. That, we yeah. can go deep on that topic, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So sleep, that's good. Mm-hmm. Do you do any sort of meditation or any journaling? You know, uh, reading for me is, okay. I think, my meditation. Yeah. yeah, that's, you know, I'll spend 20 minutes a day, you know, reading um, most of the days, depending on, you know, depending on my schedule. But um that's my time that I find to be where I can be very present and, yeah. you know, helps me to like, um, set the energy for the day. Okay. I was looking at, I heard this stat and, and I'll bring it up. And cause there's some other ones that I noticed on, on your Instagram, you said 1% of the people can only bench more than 20, 225 pounds. Yeah. Yep. Only 5% have visible abs. Yep. And less than 15% can do one pull up. Yep. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. This is just a, a lot of people are not in in good shape. I made a video yesterday too. I don't know if you saw it, but I was like, it's easier than ever to have a competitive advantage in the current world we live in. And this is not to put anybody down, but if you're if you're a high performer, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're somebody who wants to be a leader, it is easier than ever to be in that space and actually um, walk the walk because mm-hmm. so many people are not doing it, right? Because there's so many distractions. It's easier than ever to to not delay gratification because everything is at our fingertips. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, that statistic is very real just because people, you know, are avoiding discomfort. Yeah. Where do you search out your information on leading edge, like fitness related materials? I do like... Andrew Huberman's yeah. podcast. You know, yeah. it, it's interesting, right? Because like my base of knowledge comes from, um, I have a uh, NASM personal training certification, yeah. which is, um, it's very thorough. Like it is not an easy test to take. Um, it took me two tries transparently because it's a lot of uh, medical terminology as well. So a lot of the base of my knowledge comes from NASM. And then I also have a ISSA sports nutrition certification where I got even a better base of knowledge around, you know, uh, nutrition. After that, there was a podcast that I really enjoyed listening to, and I do listen to it still, just not as much. It's called Mind Pump Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, that podcast it has some incredible information for all you know all levels of fitness. Um, so that was kind of the base of my knowledge. I listened to them for probably four years when I first started in the fitness industry, and then now I've I've been following other people who are on the cutting edge of you know biohacking and things like mm-hmm. that because those are the areas that I feel like are you know really pushing. Um, 
you know, the potential and possibilities of what we could be doing, yeah. you know, outside of the gym, right? Yeah. Like grounding, like getting out in the sun, right? Like avoiding um, a lot of things that could be detrimental in our environment, like microplastics and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm kind of like heading is in, in there's quite a few people in that space that I, that I look to for that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Who's, who's one of your top people there? You know, what's interesting. <clears throat> one of my best friends. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my best friends, his name is Vance Elrod. Okay. Um, he is a professional MMA fighter. He also started a company most recently called Meraki Medicinal. Okay. And he came out with a product, um, called Meraki Blue that uses methylene blue, which is, is a, heard of that. a synthetic, um, supplement that, um, was originally created to, uh, cure mal malaria, I believe. Um, and then now it's being used as nootrop as a nootropic. So long story long, mm -hmm. um, he has an incredible base of knowledge of like, um, you know, holistic methods and also like biohacking things that he does. So, um, I'll actually just pick his brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. or again, like Andrew Huberman is, a, is, is one I look at too. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is like, what do you do differently than let's say a lot of the other people in the fitness industry where, whether maybe it's you incorporate spiritual practices into working with your clients or yeah. you, you learn something in another industry that you yeah. bring into the fitness space. Like, like yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you do there? You know, I, I truly believe in, you know, not just like, a bodybuilding diet and just like working out until like you can't work out. Most people need that motivation because not enough people have the ambition to, to get there. So that's an easy win for me. But how I like to push my clients to separate themselves and also how I separate myself as a coach is I also look at the habits, mm -hmm. right? Like how much time are you spending on your phone before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning? You know, um, are you doing the things to set yourself up for success in regards to how you feel, right? Mm -hmm. Because more importantly than what we look like is how we feel on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. I always tell my, my clients that I work with, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with people who are leaders in their field. And I always tell them, and this is something I've realized myself, like money is not like for me, the most important thing, like making money, of course, is important. And that's how we drive a lot of the things in our world. But more importantly, I, I care about how I feel and I care about how my clients feel. So how much caffeine are you consuming on a daily basis, mm -hmm. right? That tremendously affects your energy levels if you're over consuming it, because now you're using it as a crutch, right? What is your, you know, morning habits look like? What does your nighttime habits look like, right? What is your, um, you know, present, present, being present in the day look like, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell some of my clients, hey, if you're working from home on a computer, I need you right after you eat to go outside and go for a walk without your phone and be present. It's going to help increase your digestion of your food. It's going to reduce your blood sugar response. And you're going to be able to be sharper now when you go back into work. Mm -hmm. So I look at my client's schedule as a whole and I'll look at their habits as a whole. Like, are you watching TV for an hour right before you go to sleep every single night? That's probably affecting your sleep habits, mm -hmm. right? So- that's just something I look at. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I find too that like with the leaders that I work with, a lot of the problems that they want me to help solve them in the business don't start in the business. <laughs> it's interesting, right? I heard, yeah. that, I heard that from somebody else recently as well. Like yeah. we don't look at, maybe we don't look at exactly like the statistics in the business. We look at the leaders and maybe what they're doing or their employees and how they're showing up yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, usually relationships yeah. are like a huge source of conflict okay. or like just inner turmoil that then manifests itself in making poor decisions and professional right. Yeah. side, right? Like interesting. Yeah. And so for me, what, the reason why I asked that question is because I find once you get to a certain level of mastery in one area, let's call it fitness for you, yeah. you naturally, at least if you want to keep growing and right, growth right. minded, look for other like strategies in other areas yeah. and almost innovate right. to go deeper, to yeah. find the levels within the levels. I like right? that. Yeah. And every new, very true. every new level has a new devil and yeah. like, for someone like you, right. you're self-motivated. You want to, yeah. you want to say like, how can I make this better? How right. can yeah. I yeah. outdo what I just right. did? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So oh, that's great. It's almost like, yes, you can go deeper with what you already know. There's always room there, right. but then also let's sprinkle in something more exciting that yeah. I don't know if it's going to work, but right. let's see. Yeah. I love that. And then it's like yeah. birth of a new yeah. philosophy. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. And I think like that's so great to, to look at the next level of, of how you can push yourself, but yes. it, and then tying it back into, it's so important to remember how important the fundamentals are as 100%. well, right? In every area, like in a business, if we start getting lackadaisical on how we originally did X, Y, and Z, because we're focused on, you know, this expert level thing, then the expert level thing means nothing, mm -hmm. right? So we need to focus on fundamentals always. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a, the Bruce Lee quote that says, understand the form so that you could become formless. I like it. You know, yeah. and, and what I take that as is like so many people 
in my mind think like I have to have my day go like da 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 da. But mm. almost never does your day go like that. Right. And so yeah. if we're if we're so married to our day having to go a certain way, right. And then within the first thirty minutes, it doesn't. Then that kind of throws us off. Right. You know, forever. So there's yeah. there's a point to where you get a certain level of a foundation, but yeah. then also not be married to that foundation, right. knowing that yeah. life's going to just I adapt. Agree. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I need to go through my 30 step morning routine yeah, in order right, to have a good right, day. Right, it's right. like, no, right. sometimes you just got to get up and you got to right. go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, it's awesome. Yeah. I think the morning routine is an anchor, but not something you should be married to because there's days and times exactly. and maybe weeks that you have to do something different. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, adapt. and so working with a lot of your higher profile clients that are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. business minds, yeah. mm -hmm. what have you noticed com like pattern wise, what are some common traits that they seem to all possess that is interesting to you? Um, extremes in behavior, mm. right? So I believe a lot of people that have the drive and passion to do something have like, for lack of a better word, like manic actions, which are great. Like we need people like that. That's how things get done quickly. Right. Not by people that are slow moving. Right. Yeah, but right. those same people also have extreme actions in regards to other things. Like maybe they like to party or maybe they will binge food or they'll go and do this. Like, so that's what I've found with a lot of these people is as much as they put extremes into their business, they've also gone extreme maybe in other areas like what they eat. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel like their only outlet has been to yes. be able to eat food that they want because they're rewarding themselves because they're doing so well in work. But then they end up feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. That That's a consistent thing I've seen. Or, um, you know, they'll go out and get crazy and party and things, but then they end up, you know, setting themselves back like two or three days. So I always try to connect the people that I work with to not only like looks, looks are important, right? How much money you have in your bank? Yes, it's very important, right? Your business, the business scoreboard is predicated off how much your, your business is making. But what's more important is how you feel. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that as well. That's I practice what I preach every day. I eat healthy, not only because I want to look good. I'm a walking billboard, of course, for my business, sure. but I also want to feel great. I want to be present when I'm in conversation. I want to be able to have energy for everybody I speak to. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't want to have, you know, headache, acid reflux, bloating, mm -hmm. poor sleep, and all that's predicated on my lifestyle habits. So yeah. that's why I continue to pick good habits because I want to be my best. And I think that all, you can be, you can have great health. You can be, have a great lifestyle and have fun and run a business at the same time. It is possible. I believe that too. Thank you for being a voice mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, of course. With the extremes that you notice within your patients or patients with your clients, mm -hmm. yeah. like what, what are you suggesting they do aside, like with the fitness or maybe even outside of fitness to help regulate some of that? Or how are you helping them channel that in a more effective way? So no matter how you spin it, you know, discipline is going to be a part of this, right? Because yeah. there has to be an intention behind what you're doing. So connecting first to the purpose of, um, you know, the outcome, mm -hmm. which, and then reverse engineering the actions from there, right? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, okay, you're not confident uh, in your current body composition because you have too much body fat on your body. You're tired every single day and you're over caffeinating yourself. So it's going to take reducing your caffeine, caffeine intake. It's going to take reducing the amount of times you're eating out a week, but the outcome of that is going to be better energy, higher production and work, better satisfaction in your daily life and more confidence as well. Mm -hmm. So I just anchor them into the purpose and the outcome. And why do we want to do this? Well, because I'm tired of feeling like crap, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm 30, not me, but this is a client. The client's 34 years old and they're 30% body fat and they started to have some pain in their knees. Like, cool, man, this is how you want to feel at 40 years old keep doing it. Yeah. Right. So those are some things um, that I look at. I always anchor, anchor yourself into the purpose, anchor yourself into the outcome. And then it gets much easier to put the daily actions in place. Mm -hmm. But I think just simply reducing the frequency in which you're indulging can help tremendously. Right. 100%. Like, and it's, and like it's impulse control, impulse control. Right. And then also reducing, cause a lot of, a lot of people are just looking for the easy way out. Cause they're going, well, this food makes me happy. This alcohol makes me happy. Um, watching this movie makes me happy, but the more that you do that, the less happy it makes you. Do you think it's happiness or do you think it's numbing? I think it's or both. both. Well, it's both ultimately, right? Because yeah. if you're numbing, it's because you're not happy. Right. But have you ever thought and maybe being the not thing being that happy is yeah, kind of more cyclical, closer to happy? It's a happy. cyclical process. <laughs> yeah. So no matter how you spin it, the discipline is really what creates true happiness, right? Mm -hmm. And I literally talked about this yesterday. I made a video that um, if you're 
obsessed with being happy instead of obsessed with the process of what is what's going to make you happy, you're not going to be happy. So you have yeah. to start getting obsessed with the process and know that the actions you're doing are what are actually creating true happiness through feeling great on yeah. a day to day basis. Yeah. Something that I that I remind myself all the time is I think purpose is much more important than happiness mm -hmm. because happiness is only really for the moment, right? It's very fleeting. Purpose is something you can't that's- You be happy constantly. No, or, yeah. and you wouldn't want to. Right, because like, then it defeats the purpose of being happy. <laughs> yes, not only that, but then there's times in your life where you're not going right. to be just because yeah. like, of the situation. Yeah. Like you're not gonna be happy yeah. for someone you lose in your family. Right, right. Or, you know, like right. there's times- Life embedded into life are lessons, and with those lessons come specific emotions, right? right? Happiness is definitely an important one, yeah. but not one that everyone should seek to have all the time because then you're going to choose pleasure right. over you, discomfort. You got it. Ex right? Exactly, exactly. But then yep. also, like, purpose is steadfast, and purpose is deeper. Purpose says, I'm still going to do the work even though it's uncomfortable, even though there's pain, even though there's uncertainty yeah. because it's bigger than me. Yeah, right. 100%. That's the only thing that keeps you consistent. Yeah. yeah. And there's going to be days when you don't feel like waking up. There's going to be days when you don't feel like doing the work. Yes. But I think when people can get more engaged with the idea that those actions are what actually bring real happiness, the work gets easier to do. And yeah. I, I found that point in my life right now. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And then fulfillment is like the interplay, right. I think, between the purpose and the happiness. Right. It's like, I, I love that I'm making progress right. towards something like an ideal. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm growing and I'm also appreciating the work that I'm doing and the right, progress that right. I'm making, which produces a, a, the form of happiness. Right, like yeah. if you could look at it from that way and understand yeah. that that process is never going to end. No, uh -uh. it doesn't. Right? <laughs> it doesn't. Great. Yeah. But people like live in one moment for a large part of their life. Mm -hmm. They're trapped by a story or right. some traumatic experience that right. they can't seem to hold on, like let go of. And right. that comes with a whole other set of emotions mm -hmm. and chemical addictions inside the body right. that yep. manifest in a lot of different areas. Yep. But purpose is like, I find the the thing that like is the catalyst. The driver. Yeah. yeah. And the it driver. goes to intention yeah. too. Yeah. I'm going to work out today because not just I want to look better. Right. Right. But I want to feel better. Yeah. And I'll be healthier. When I'm not motivated, the thing that pushes me is this workout I know is going to give me more energy tomorrow. Yes. Legitimately, that's what I tell myself. I'm like, all right, every single row I do on this row machine, even though it's hard, it's arduous, my knee, my legs are sore. Um, I know that every rep, I'm going to have more energy tomorrow. So I'm basically paying my dues for the next day. Mm. You're reminding me of something. I, of all the, like, the high achievers that I, uh, that's all put a title on you momentarily. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, you're it. someone who's driven. Like, yeah. I find that if they're, when compared to like looking at the past, looking at the future or remaining present, mm -hmm. Ambitious individuals, go oriented people are more so in the future than in the present. Very few can get to solely present. Maybe they toggle back between present and future, but future because they're wanting to create something that is either deeper, bigger, better, faster, you name it, mm -hmm. good or bad, it's just what it is. And then people who aren't as high performing tend to focus more on the past what they didn't do, right, what right, they could have right, done. Right. Yes, I agree. You know, agree. all of that. I agree, yeah. So a lot of your talk yeah. to get you to take action in the moment yeah. is future-based yeah. in a reality that you want to have. Right, yeah. And then you're you're transplanting that future reality yeah. back into Great. this moment yeah. to drive I emotion yeah. to do something. Yeah. It's That's huge. really cool. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like two ways to do that. Like you can live in a painful reality of the future that can drive mo energy now, mm -hmm. or yeah. you can live in a... I want that, get that yeah. to do this yeah. now, you know? Like, I think I have a healthy balance of both. Yeah, I just don't I think talk, you have to. I don't talk about it as much, but a, <laughs> a little bit of that is, is fear driven yeah. too, which is, you know, I think something that a lot of people that are high achievers have, like they mm -hmm. have this unrealistic like fear yeah. that it's not going to work out or something. Right. And that's like the constant drive, right? 100%. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. What would you say, let, let's shift to some exercises, like actually at the gym that Love you it. feel yeah. most people would benefit from. Okay. So let's, let's start with this question here. What, what exercise are people getting wrong? Like doing wrong? What like exercise? Is it a squat? Yeah. Is it a bench? Is yeah. it like, what are they not thinking about when doing the exercise, thinking they're doing a good job, yeah. but actually like, I, you know, I just made a video about this, uh, two days ago because it's very, very common is a lot of people don't do bench press or any really like chest press properly. And that's why the, the rates of shoulder injuries are so high. It's because of poor mechanics during mm -hmm. their movement patterns. So a lot of people will do a bench press or a chest press um, as heavy as they can with poor form. Um, and then they end up injuring their shoulders. Um, 
this is because their elbows are too flared out. So if you start a movement mm -hmm. like a chest press or a bench press and your elbows are basically 90 degrees, like you're this position right here with your bicep and yeah. your rib cage is 90 degrees, you're in a bad position. Which is kind of what they teach in and high school, it, it, that's gym what they and like all that yeah, stuff, right? Like, you'll read that in books too, <laughs> yeah. which is which is incredibly strange to me because it puts a, a lot of stress on the shoulder joint. So what I'll have my clients do or I, I'll give cues is I'll actually, you want to bring your elbows in to about 45 degrees. This mm -hmm. 45 degree angles actually creates more engagement in your pecs and mm -hmm. also reduces the amount of strain on the shoulder mm -hmm. joint. And you're going to get a much better path um, in mechanics in that in that movement and reduce risk of injury. So that's okay. that's something that I see consistently. A lot of men, of course, do wrong because sure. they're the ones that are benching a lot. And that's dumbbell that you're um, suggesting? Dumbbells or and even bench too. So on mm. bench, even though you have a, a, a grip Straight that's here on. that's just static, you can bring your elbows in. Okay. You can still twist your elbows and you're going to get more engagement and you're going to reduce risk of injury. So I definitely don't bench press as much as I do dumbbell press because I feel it's more, more comfortable for my shoulders. Yeah. And there seems to be more control with the dumbbell too. More, more control, yeah. yeah. The bench press is just very static and mm -hmm. it's okay to do bench press, but I just, you know, I I don't really go too heavy when I work out because I, I focus on form and, and really controlling the weight versus just trying to look like I'm lifting heavy weights. That's good. Yeah. And what would you say for women? Uh, squats. Mm. Yeah, I would say for, for females um, and, and men as well, but a lot of um, people will do barbell squats um, incorrectly, which lead to um, back injury, which lead to, um, you know, knee injury, and then also just not building, you know, the muscles that are working that movement properly. So uh, the squat is one of the most fundamental and um, I, I think one of the best movements that you could do in the gym, as long as you have a healthy body to do it. Um, when you're doing a squat, you're engaging your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your core, your back. Like it's such a great compound movement. Um, so a lot of people you'll see when they do a squats, they'll start the movement in their knees. The movement, it doesn't start in the knees. The movement starts in the hips. So when you're doing a squat, the first thing you want to do is you want to push your hips back. Mm -hmm. As you push your hips back, now you're in a perfect position to start bending your knees and getting yourself into it, all the way down into the into the bottom of the squat. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people, like there's a common misconception that you should do astagrass. Now, here's the caveat. If you have the mobility in your mm -hmm. ankles and your hips, it's okay to go all the way down and all the way back up. But Majority of people don't have great mobility in their hips or their or their uh, right. ankles or the knees. I'm they go to do into this <laughs> yeah. low squat and they yeah. feel like they're not doing it right and they end up yeah. injuring their back. So it's best to go down to where you have um, – where your natural range of movement is. And the way you can test this is you stand up straight, lift one knee up as high as you can. That is exactly where you should stop. Mm. Or if you're looking at yourself doing a squat, as soon as your hips – start to rotate and your glutes start to rotate underneath your body, that's going to be that the position that you should stop in so you don't injure yourself. Is that the butt wink? The butt wink. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's so what I say. Okay. Only, only go to that point. Yeah. Initially. Go, go, go. Yeah. Until you build. Yep. Yeah. Okay. In, unless you have the hip mobility. Like yeah. if you feel like you have the mobility and you're not straining yourself because that's when you, again, you're going to injure yourself. So a lot of people either, A, they just don't engage properly um, and they're not using their glutes. They're not using their quads and hamstrings and they end up just you know, mm -hmm. just doing an improper movement. The goal is to be as efficient as possible when you're in the gym. Mm -hmm. How long are your workouts? For me personally, my resistance training, I do for 50 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, anything over that I think is a little bit um, redundant. You should just, you should be crushing your workout. Like if you're in the gym for two hours doing resistance training, you're just not efficient <laughs> with your movements. And I, I, yeah. I just don't want to be in the gym that long. Right. Um, and then... Um, I'll do 20 to 30 minutes of cardio, steady state cardio. I'll every either day? do that um, every, day. every day. So I'll either do that post-workout or I'll do that as a separate session outside. So okay. I'll, I like to get outside depending. I mean, it doesn't even matter what the weather is, but, yeah. um, you know, in July, a little bit tougher to get outside, you yeah. know, at, at 2 p.m. But I try to get outside as much, <laughs> as, as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. And as far as core goes... What would you say like I've I've one of my really good friends is like core should be in every exercise that you do, not just an isolated fifteen minutes where you're doing nothing but core exercises. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on just I think core? Both, I don't think I don't think core should be in every single movement you do. Um, I do think that you do build core muscles and core strength by doing certain exercises, mm -hmm. but I also think it's important, and it depends, right? Like you mm -hmm. look at a bicep, right? You you are working your bicep muscle every time you do a pull up. Mm -hmm. But are you isolating the bicep? No. No. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if the goal is to build bigger biceps, well, I want to isolate the biceps. Right. 
So the abs are just like any other muscle. You can build your abs. You can build bigger abs. So if the goal is to have bigger abs and to have more predominant abs, you should be doing isolated core movements, right? Mm -hmm. But yes, there is movements that you're doing that are also working your core at the same time. So I think it's good to do a combination both. of both. Okay. And what would you say is your favorite core exercise? My favorite core. Specifically core, core. Favorite core exercise? Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a tough <laughs> one. I wish we could do like a top three. <laughs> okay, let's do a top three. Okay, top three. perfect. All right. So low plank, mm -hmm. just because anybody can do it. Um, and it's fundamental for core stabilization. Um, or your trans Low plank is on your- Low plank on the forearm. Or yeah, I should say- your transverse abdominal wall. So your ability to basically hold your back and core in one position like this, which strengthens barbell squat movements as well. Um, and then I really like farmer carries, like mm. uh, dumbbell farmer carries or kettlebell farmer carries. They're phenomenal as a functional movement. And for those of that, you, that don't know what that is, can you? So you would take two, two heavy dumbbells or two heavy kettlebells and you would walk approximately like 50 yards at a time. It's great for your grip strength. It's great. It also builds a little bit of like traps and then you're getting a ton of core stabilization mm. as well um and then for um a rotational core movement i really like uh cable wood choppers because mm. you're getting you're getting the functionality of a uh, being able to rotate under tension but you're also building or you're also strengthening and building your uh oblique obliques as well which is the side that. of the core muscles so um those are my three favorites those are cool yeah the farmer carries will you ever use one one side i love one? the single arm farmer carries okay. as well yeah suitcase okay. carry yep. um you know that's definitely a progression from okay. the cool. from the farmer carries but i love the suitcase carries those are even even more difficult uh i would say than the farmer carries as well cool. so yeah how long can you hold the plank i could probably do it like over three minutes nice yeah i can't tell you the last time i did that but i could probably do <laughs> over three minutes just yeah okay that's beautiful yeah. what is what is something that you've always wanted to talk about on the podcast but never have had the space to one more time one what's a concept that you would have loved to talk on any other podcast but you haven't had the opportunity to do so hmm. great question that's that's pretty deep. Take your time. You know what? Um, I would say the the and only because I'm talking about things I know about. Yeah. Um, I would say the mindset and um, the moment that I did the amateur boxing match. Let's talk about it. I just think it was such a um, transformational time in my life. Um. If you, if you want, I can Let's get go, it. Bro. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you were, you were excited, I think, to hear about this as well. So I'll just tell the story really quick. Okay. Um, you know, basically, I put myself into an amateur boxing match in on eight days notice <laughs> with not much training, fighting a 10-time MMA champion oh, in front of all of my friends and family on Fremont Street, probably 200 people. As well as industry, as well as a lot of like Vegas industry, um, nightlife and business owners. Um, so the amount of nerves I have going in going into that was extremely high. But how I felt after, there is n I don't think I've ever had another feeling come close to how I felt leaving that leaving that um, ring and that mm. venue. Have you ever done an amateur I mean, boxing no, match? No, no. Okay, um, I've sparred, but not nowhere. No. Yeah. yeah so it's, yeah, it's not even close to sparring because no. I've sparred too. Yeah. What's interesting is. I didn't even spar in a ring until after I did that boxing match. That so boxing you really match threw yourself to the wolves was there, my <laughs> first sparring session. So you could understand because you've sparred now. Oh, yeah. Imagine sparring live in front of all your friends and family, an MMA champion. Like it was, it was such a crazy experience. So real quick, I got the call. One of my friends, she ran this charity event that was called um, – um, the Kapow Boxing. I don't mm. know if you ever heard of I've that. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. so it was industry yeah. boxing matches. They don't do them anymore. No. This was in 2018, October. And um, <clears throat> and she was a part of it. And it was benefiting Cancer Train, which is a nonprofit organization that was helping kids with cancer. Um, so all the proceeds of the ticket sales um, would go to this um, mm. organization, which I thought was cool as mm. well, right? Like I've always been into, you know, giving back and things like that. So she had told me about the event, um, like in just in passing, not because she wanted me to do it. She's like, and then she, at the time I just started getting into boxing for cardio. I was using it to get leaner, yeah. um, 20 minutes a day, a couple yeah. days a week and it was working. And, um, she goes, uh, Hey, so I saw you be getting into boxing. One of the fighters, um, dropped out of the fight, uh, dropped out of one of the matches and we need a replacement. She goes, would you be down? 
I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, that's like, it's like in like 10 days. It was like 12 days or something like that. I was like, I don't know. I was like, that's, that's pretty rough. Yeah. You know, I'd, I haven't even been training for it. And this guy's, you know, an MMA champion. And then I just, I don't know. I talked to one of my, my friends about it and I was like, you know what, let's do it. I, I, I like to put myself always in challenging positions because it makes me level up Yes, in every area in business. Like this is something that I'm choosing purposely to make myself uncomfortable. And I knew that by doing it, I would become better because of it. And other, I would potentially inspire other people. Now I can tell it as a story, which is even better, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, we decided on a cruiser weight at the time of the fight, at the time that I decided to fight, I was 200 pounds and the guy was 185. Mm. So I had to get down between, uh, seven, I had to drop seven or eight pounds. Uh, cause we decided I could be at like 193 or something like that yeah. in eight days as well. So I stopped eating carbohydrates cause that's an easy way to lose water weight yeah. quickly. And I took a hot bath every night cause that's also how you mm. lose water weight quickly. So I was like a fighter, like getting wow. ready, like on an eight Couldn't day notice. Wait, yeah. And I started just hitting mitts with one of my friends, like outside of his, in the front of his house. Cause I didn't have anywhere to train at the time. So I'm like one of my friends, my good friend Vance, that is yeah. an MMA fighter. I was like, yo, hold mitts for me. So I just go to his house like uh, three days before the fight and just held God. mitts. I'm like, all right, bro, this is what he's like. He's like, listen, we it's can't like Rocky. Bro. Yeah, he's like, he's like, listen, we can't learn everything. He's like, this is what you want to do. He's like, you want to hit him and then just move. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> I had done some street fighting when I was younger, but sure. boxing is uh, completely it's different. Art. It's very yeah. technical. Mm -hmm. It's very, you know, it takes a lot of, um, so I had the heart, but, but the skill of course wasn't there yet. So we get to the day of the fight. My nerves were all over the place. I was, you know, I was anxious, but I was of course on the outside of, I looked tough. Right. Um, and at no point I, I felt like pulling out. Of course I was like, I'm here. I already committed to it. I'm a stand in, you know? So we get there and we're we're walking up to the ring and uh, I have my friend also cornering me. He's my corner man. Um, so it was actually my friend Vance and also my friend Andrew, who was a, who was an amateur boxer as well. And they were cornering me and we get up to the ring. I turn around. I'm like, Hey man, how do I get in this ring? Cause I didn't even know how to open the ropes. Oh like I didn't know. <laughs> He's like, dude, just open the ropes. I'm like, all right. So I open the ropes. So I get in the ring and I, and I stand in there and then I look around and I see my mom. I see, you know, some of my best friends. Yeah. I see some of my clients. I see all these people and they're like, go Michael. And I'm just looking around like, what did I get myself into? Like, I'm Jeez. literally about to fight in front of all these people. And like, you know, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, you know what? Like I'll give it my best effort. Of course I know how to fight a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, you know, the other guy, he's like, before the fight, he was like running laps around the building, like warming up. And I'm like, Jesus, this guy's, this guy's insane. You <laughs> yeah. know? So he comes out, we both have headgear on, we look at each other and I realize I'm like, man, it's like, I don't have any adrenaline right now. Like I realized I didn't have an adrenaline rush and I was waiting for that because mm -hmm. I know that's going to help. Like, so it's not as painful. Yeah. And so I started to make myself angry. So I, w I looked at him and I just pictured him like, you know, punching like my sister in the face mm. or something. I pictured like the mm. worst things possible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And now I was like, it was engaged. They said go. And then, you know, we did three rounds. Um, and went back and forth. Um, I was a little sloppy with my technique, but I, I, uh, I hit, I hit him enough times that they had to stop the fight in the second round to wipe blood from his face. Okay. Um, I got knocked down only because I slipped, um, but went to the third round and judge's decision, um, he won. Yeah. So I lost. Right. But I walked away from it like like knowing that I just did something that was so uncomfortable that like not many people, I don't even know the percentage of people will ever experience in their whole entire life. Yeah, and, let alone choose. Yeah, let alone choose to do, right? <laughs> and like you just walk out of there like so calm. Like yeah. the amount of calmness you have after being in like a fight like that is is it's a different feeling. And then not only that, him and him and I became good friends after that. Mm. And we followed each other on Instagram and like talk to each other. Sometimes he'll comment on, and he was like, dude, you hit so hard. It, it was just, it was just funny. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we had banter and stuff like that, but yeah. during the fight we hated each other. And I think that's really cool about fighting too, yeah. is you become friends with the person after. Anyways, that's, that's the story of that. It was that's just such beautiful. a great moment. I think the moral of the story is don't be afraid to put yourself in challenging positions on purpose because it's going to help you level up. I love that, man. Thank you for sharing that. And I wish, yeah. Um, I was at what Republic in 2013, 14. You were working there? I was working okay, there. Okay, yeah. And um, that's before I became what I'm doing now. Yeah. And there was a guy named, I think it was named, his name was Blaze, uh, or I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he he was in that as well. Okay. He, he did a fight there. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it, was, was it was gnarly. Like some of the fights were just gnarly. These guys were, I mean, I was swinging too. Me and, yeah. me and, me and my, uh, my opponent, we were, I mean, I got hit a lot. He got hit a lot. Um, 
But after that, I, I started training boxing. Um, and I've been training for, for five years now. Yeah. So, I saw some of your videos. You got some you. good form. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, brother. Yeah. I got to see, I want to check out, check out you and, yeah, and kind of what you got going on. Yeah. I'd love to. Um, yeah, but, Go. but it's fun, man. I just enjoy it. It's fun. I, I want to do another fight actually eventually, yeah. but we'll see. Cool. Yeah. So last couple questions. Go ahead. What's, uh, what's next for you in the next couple of years? What are you looking forward to? So I am currently, uh, building my online, um, coaching business and mm -hmm. I'm working with people all across the United States now. So that's mm -hmm. been something I've been doing for the last year. Um, was on a, you know, a couple of big podcasts earlier this year as well. Um, that really helped to, to push my brand. So really just growing my brand, helping more people, um, over the next two years, um, is my goal working with, you know, uh, as many people as I, as I can. So yeah. what's been awesome is, you know, being a personal trainer, I was a personal trainer for, you know, eight years now transitioning into doing primarily online training. I've used all the skills that I've developed there. And now I've been able to get in a space that I can work with more people. And that's what I'm really excited to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm currently building. Um, yeah. And just double down on that and then see where it goes. I could definitely see myself getting into also like a leadership position. I would love to coach entrepreneurs in the future as well, as far as like building a, building a business. Cause I do have, um, also a passion for like entrepreneurship and, yeah. and things like that. So that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you, your heart, your work. Appreciate it's it, been, been amazing conversation. What, Likewise. where can we, uh, what can we leave them with anything that's coming through? Um, is leave them with as far just as info, just info, but like any last minute messages that you want. Yeah. I, I, I think, with. um, discipline is so important in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and the more disciplined you can be, the happier you're going to be. The more that you avoid discipline, the more that you avoid discomfort, the less happy that you're going to be. So lean into the discomfort, lean into the hard work, and that's what's really going to give you fulfillment and happiness and also allow you to have a bigger impact on the people around you. Yeah. Beautiful. And best place to reach you is Instagram. Instagram. Instagram is where I'm doing a lot of coaching and where yeah. a lot of people are reaching out to me. So Michael Sheedy Fitness is the Instagram. Reach out to me there. Give me a follow. Um, I try to post as much valuable content as I can. Yeah. Yep. Dope, brother. Well, I awesome. appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, brother. All Thank right. you.